So at this point, I think that's enough about the essential characteristics that can be declared. So in the last section, what we saw was what was meant with the CE marking of structural steel products in a plain English. And then we took a little bit more detailed look at the manufacturing characteristics or the characteristics that are based on the actual manufacturing process. And then we saw that in order to have enough proof to back up, for example, weldability or fracture toughness or even uh, durability, we are going to have to have enough proof and this proof basically translates into having a documented manufacturing process. And in this case, not just any man manufacturing process, but the manu manufacturing process that is uh, built, built according to the EN 1092, that actually is the twin of this 1091, and which deals exclusively with the manufacturing and also with the erection of structural steel products. So let's take a really quick look at the, even though in the previous slide I already mentioned that the scope of the FPC system is going to be larger and bigger in this, with these structural steel products than with other products. Let's take a quick look at the FPC system scope. So basically in the, probably next or after that, we're gonna take a much better look at what, what must be included in the FPC system. But here I just would like to emphasize the fact again that the FPC system scope must include the direct control of manufacturing. And this is, this is because you need to have the proof to back up your CE marking and the declaration of performance. So the FP system must include section 6.3 of EN 1091. And this is basically the, uh, let's say, the general part of your factory production control. And here you control the resources. Here you can develop processes that are used to control non-conforming products and so on. And this is actually directly referenced in the Appendix ZA of 1091, so the harmonized standard. But in addition, you are going to have to have, in some way or another, you must take into account EN 1092 in ter terms of manufacturing. And in addition, EN ISO 38343 in terms of welding. We have welding requirements here, quite a lot of actually, but this is basically the FPS of welding or fusion welding quality management system, in fact. And if you have a documented FPC system based on 6.3, you are taken into account 1092 and ISO 38343 in terms of welding, you are, or you are considered to have adequate proof to back up your CE marking. So you can actually prove that the, all the butt welds that you have made don't actually form the weak point in, a frac, uh, in the structure. So you can declare that if this is S355, I'm sorry for, for my hand writing again, and this is S355, this whole structure will also be S355. And this weld here doesn't form a weak point or these affected areas don't form a weak point and so on. 